What a way to go. <laughs> it's a comedy. It's a very, very typical comedy. Um, the subject matter is laughable. Um, Shirley MacLaine uh, is being tracked down by males in the, her local town. She's an attractive catch. And this really rich uh, man who, who thinks he can buy everything assumes that he's going to buy her. But he's sadly uh, mistaken as she uh, uh, revolts against anything connected with acquiring large sums of money. It's against her sort of uh, moral fibre. And so she then turns her attention to a man who's virtually destitute and lives uh, sort of off the land, played by Dick Van Dyke. She chooses him and he he's amazed that he should be uh, chosen by Herb, but they get together and get married. And then, um, I think he changes uh, uh, and becomes a, f a fanatical acquirer of business and money. And uh, his wife finds it difficult to grapple with this acquiring of wealth he becomes mega rich and then at the <coughs> the, the pinnacle has a heart attack and dies she then gets left all this cash and decides she wants to give it to the government um we then see uh move forward a little bit and uh by this behavior of course is uh deemed as quite outrageous and why would you want to give your money away? Uh, however, um, she uh, legally does it and kept, keeps some of it and then decides to take a trip to Paris uh, whereupon she goes, gets housed a taxi cab or gets into a taxi and uh, whole, lo and behold, the taxi driver is one Paul Newman um, who speaks a pretty good uh, French and uh, this basic plot change I will explore uh, a bit more in detail later. Moving on. Um, the taxi job is his part-time uh, hobby. He's principally an artist, an abstract artist. Not exactly Jackson Pollock. Some of his methods are kind of, kind of strange and original and uh, the crowd that he keeps, fellow artists. Um, he offers uh, uh, the opportunity for a chimpanzee to paint on uh, a board. Um, also, he's got a friend who uses uh, weapons, guns, rifles, and shoots at pots of paint, which then explode onto the canvas. Um, it's another one of his uh, uh, <coughs> friends. But he clicks with McLean. They end up becoming a couple. Uh, and there's a, a sort of hint at uh, uh, sexual liberation in this uh, film where we see uh, various poses um, of them in bed and in a bath. And um, uh, there's also a censored uh, frame and it's all rather tongue-in-cheek, but it's, um, it captures the zaniness of the character, particularly um, Newman, um, who's absolutely brilliant, even though the character is completely beyond the pile, sort of something like possibly Fellini would have created uh, if he combined with Dali. Um, but uh, his... Uh, his character part enables him to become more and more sort of uh, crazy in a sort of uh, affectionate way. And uh, McLean looks absolutely exotic, um, even though uh, she wasn't f uh, curvy as such. Uh, some of the outfits expl explore her sexuality absolutely perfectly. Um, and it's all becoming quite an amusing little movie, albeit uh, instantly forgettable once you've finished it.
as we watch the couple in their newfound love, um, it becomes apparent that uh, Newman is just as obsessed with his art as uh, Maclean's uh, husband passed on was about money. As she comes up with a, a novel idea of using a sort of a machine with a, a sort of arm or a couple of arms that's a sort of uh, like a cantilever style um, and it's got paintbrushes on the end of the so-called hands and she uh, gets this linked into somehow music and uh, another alternative abstract is created later on uh, it, it, uh, Newman uh, shows this uh, to one 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 picture to uh, somebody he meets outside and ends up with uh, two hundred dollars. So he's now clued in to this money scenario, um, exactly the opposite of what McLean was seeking. So again, an, another is falling foul of this uh, obsession or desire to make large amounts of money. So Larry sucked into success, all things changed, the little cramped studio uh, is insufficient for living in as well as working in, they buy uh, a nice property but Larry's never there. So uh, McLean's character is faced with the same uh, problem, how to return to the life where uh, money is not on the agenda. and. Uh, I saw a little bit of zaniness in this, which uh, reflected on how Woody Allen might encompass this uh, type of behaviour into his comedies. There's certainly uh, a, a, a fondness for the extremely uh, uh, diverse and zany uh, thoughts, um, Beethoven uh, to music. Uh, Beethoven music to the canvas, uh, quite bizarre really, but uh, very in tune with uh, the 70s uh, sci-fi comedy uh, route. Such is the nature of this uh, comedy romance that uh, as uh, <coughs> McLean's character uh, gets ready to leave Paris on the uh, air, airport tarmac, she runs into Larry, a multi-millionaire, uh, and uh, they quickly uh, exchange pleasantries. And next, she's on his uh, uh, own plane heading for New York, and she ends up uh, with him and married shortly. Faced with the same prospect of a man who's got everything, um, he focuses his attention more on her um, but it doesn't last and when he finds out that his uh, business holdings have gone up massively since his inactivity he's he hints at alarm and uh, once fears he's losing control um, but um, McLean's character comes up with this idea that uh, the plane was named Melissa and he, she finds out that Melissa was in fact the name of a cow when uh, Larry was a youngster um, and they had a farm and so she assumes quite correctly that he's still got a love for it so she steers him towards selling out her holdings and buying a farm so he can rekindle what he lost in his, his youth however uh, one morning he goes to milk Melissa uh, and the um, the bull takes umbrage and catapults uh, Larry out of the uh, uh, place where the, the cows are kept and of course he dies and so she's now left with another fortune but another widow. McLean admits <laughs> another contender for husband Pinky, who has this one-man show, a bit of a song and dance man, cross between a clown and a, a vaudeville star or 
not a star as the case may be and he does a, his show at this sort of cafe bar across the road and of course McLean's character is invited and she joins him predictably she marries Benson who appears to re not be interested the slightest in wealth and uh, climbing the ladder he's a song and dance man for sure and then we have a great little number where he of course being Gene Kelly uh, does a sort of dance routine tap dance and all uh, reminiscent of his musicals like American in Paris uh, and uh, uh, McLean joins in uh, it's very much in front of a set that looks remarkably like um, a large liner and the uh, dance space is the deck but it's all pretty harmless fun and I love the uh, musical rendition after Pinky Benson gets trampled by a, a mob of fans and dies uh, for the fourth time uh, Louisa is left as a widow with a fortune. Um, then uh, we return to her therapy session with the doctor, which she now says has come to an end. And then inadvertently, the doctor proposes to her based on the fact that she's rich. But then out of the blue appears Leonard Crawley, the rich dude who Louisa rejected at the beginning of the film he is now lost his fortune and become a janitor and so uh this corny ending where they get together uh with a small holding and have four children uh and uh that's about it there's one small twist at the end and if you want to watch it watch it the standard of acting in this is pretty strong uh newman's performance stands out but i loved kelly as well and mclean carries the movie uh, directed by uh, J. Lee Thompson uh, for 20th Century Fox. Um, and it's, uh, it's a pleasant enough view, but completely forgettable. Final point on this uh, 1964 movie uh, um, is that uh, it had a budget of $3.7 million. And amazingly, it made $11 million at the box office for such a, a, a very, very below par comedy. But I guess uh, these stars had to be uh, paid. Messrs. Uh, Newman, McLean, uh, Dean Martin, uh, Gene Kelly and Dick Van Dyke, they all must have cost a real fortune. Uh, but it, it came out of the $3.7 million. Uh, but... Uh, it still had a profit of over $7 million, not bad for a piece of rubbish.